Hi there, how you doing? It's been a bit. So today I wanted to sit down and do a bit of a different video. I would like to expand on my content a little bit and maybe provide some insight, anecdotes, and maybe hopefully uplift people with my content. That's something that I've always really wanted to do and I figured why not try to do it. So today we are going to be talking about dream cosplays. Now for those who don't know, a dream cosplay is a cosplay that you aspire to do at some point in your cosplay career. It can be whatever you feel is something you want to aspire to do at some point. Not today, not tomorrow, maybe not even next year, but at some point. Now in 2021, I did my dream cosplay and I'm wearing him today. Haku was the character I really wanted to cosplay more than any character ever. <laughs> if you've been on this channel long enough, you know that Haku, 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 Haku. is a staple. <laughs> so I would like to talk about how this costume came to be, why I didn't cosplay him earlier, and also hopefully provide some advice on how to pursue your dream cosplay if maybe you struggle with a certain mindset that I feel is very detrimental to the cosplay community and to society in general. So if that sounds like something you're into, keep on watching. So I already touched on my story with Haku in a short from my dumb shit I did as a baby cosplayer series. However, I really wanted to go in depth with this. I also have another short and that touches on my identity and kind of ties everything together. Haku was the first character I cosplayed after coming out as non-binary and he has always held a very special place in my heart. So in order to truly understand where my mindset was at in this whole process, we have to go back in time. Now, I was a 2000s kid, and judging by my YouTube demographic, a lot of you were too. Not sure if it's the same everywhere, but my generation was taught that we had to be as double zero, under 5'5", five five, and had no indication of body hair or that we needed any grooming. Now, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. I started cosplaying in 2009. I was 12 going on 13. I had struggled with my body issues. I remember uh, six, seven is the earliest I remember struggling with, with my body and thinking I was heavy. I went through puberty very early, so I was the tallest kid in my class. I was developing differently than everyone else and I got bullied a lot. So naturally I started forming a complex <laughs> and that is something I carried with me for a very long time. And it's something I still carry with me to this day. I'm really only an inch or two more than the average height for an AFAB person, but I still think I'm really tall and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that I still have that visceral reaction when talking about my height. And that's not to say a lot of this doesn't still occur and a lot of the mindsets aren't still held to this day because it's it's the truth we do still view people with different bodies in different ways and it's really disgusting despite all that when i started cosplaying i was more into the character side of things like acting in character rather than focusing on the costume itself however when i started to watch more cosplay content on youtube I started getting recommendations and cosplayers in my ear telling me that if you have more angular features, you need to cosplay men, and if you have more rounded features, you need to cosplay women, which is absolute bullshit. It doesn't really... <laughs> those features are present on all genders, regardless. But in all those specifics, there was a theme, and that was stay away from cosplaying characters that you don't look like. If your character is not the same height as you, forget it. If they aren't the same weight as you, forget it. Now that really limited me with the characters I could cosplay. I steered more towards men or androgynous characters. Obviously nothing was ever perfect and of course that was another thing that just sent me into a spiral. I'm an inch or two taller than the character and that just absolutely sent me. And it's ridiculous. This mindset is ridiculous and even talking about it now I'm embarrassed. Suffice it to say I stayed away from characters like Haku because he was shorter and he was 
in my mind, cuter than I was, and I should just leave it to the other cosplayers to do it, even though he was my dream. There was one con that I cosplayed Chihiro from Dagen Rampa, and after working so hard on this cosplay, I get to the con and I am really uncomfortable. It was out of my comfort zone. This character didn't fit the criteria that I had set for myself. And there is a cosplayer standing maybe a few meters away from me. And I'm there. And we're cosplaying the same character. But they're shorter, cuter, and in my opinion, fit the character more. Someone walks up, takes a look at both of us, and asks them for a picture. Now, there could have been many reasons for that. They could have been friends. They could have felt more comfortable approaching that person because I have been told I have resting bitch face. But in my mind, it was because I was tall, overweight, and let's put it out there, I thought I was ugly. And that is so sad. That is so sad that with a hobby that is supposed to be fun, the information that is fed to us could affect us that badly is heartbreaking. Now, I, I feel like I've been ranting a lot in this video, so I'm going to stop the ranting there. <laughs> I feel like another reason I felt confident to cosplay Haku finally was because I lost a bunch of weight in 2019. I lost 60 pounds, and I would like to open up in a video about that as well, because that is a very important event in my life, and I want to talk about it. That's all. Okay, so let's let's bring it back up. Let's bring the mood back up a little bit, right? My body wasn't the only reason <laughs> that I didn't cosplay Haku. The first reason I did not cosplay Haku <laughs> is because I didn't have a Zabuza. And uh, if you know me, a Zabuza is a necessity. <laughs> and number two, I did not make it past episode 30 of Naruto the first time I watched it. So I was super into Zabuza and Haku but I could not get past <laughs> the Land of Waves arc. It took me a long time. It took me a very long time, so I figured it wouldn't be right for me to cosplay Haku if I didn't at least give the series another chance. But here we are. It's 2023. It has been two years since I started cosplaying Haku, because you know what? I said fuck it. I'm gonna cosplay whoever the fuck I want, and I'm gonna have fun with it. And I did, and I am. Cosplay itself is so therapeutic to me, and I feel like I am finally doing it for the right reasons in a way that makes sense for me. My message for this video is to just go for it. Whatever your dream cosplay is, you can do it. But to say you won't do it because your body or your height or your looks won't fit the character, that's not right you are limiting yourself far too much. Things like not having the funds to do it are valid reasons. You can have savings set aside just for that cosplay. You can do it. Unless your dream cosplay is offensive or it is going to hurt someone, go for it. I don't look 100% like the characters I cosplay. That's because they're a fictional character. They are either animations or live action actors on a screen. You can't possibly place a burden like that on yourself. It's not fair. And cosplay is about having fun, and that's what you should be doing. Take a look at my Gallo Timos cosplay. Do I look like him? <sighs> not with these arms, but I have fun doing it. And there were times where I didn't feel confident in my Gallo, and I still don't. And I am working to identify and tweak things on him that will make me feel more comfortable. And with certain characters, it can take a bit of time. Please don't get discouraged if you put on a costume for the first time and you feel like you don't fit the character. Don't throw out the costume. Put it in the closet and then come back and reevaluate once you're ready. I know how it feels to finally get your costume in the mail and to put it on to look in the mirror and go, I have made the biggest mistake. But it doesn't have to be like that. It shouldn't be the end of the world, and it isn't the end of the world. Sometimes it takes a small change to make all the difference in how you feel about a certain cosplay. For instance, I stopped putting white in my waterline and instead use a tone that matches my skin a little more. And I really enjoy how it looks. It has completely changed how my makeup looks, and I feel more confident about it. There are ways to make yourself feel confident in your cosplay. 
and it doesn't have to be 100%. In fact, if my cosplays were all 100% accurate, I would not be having fun. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. At the end of the day, it's worth it to work towards what you want, and it's worth it to at least try. Because you put a lot of effort into your craft and you deserve to feel confident about it. That's all I have for today. I really hope that my words helped and I hope that maybe this inspired someone to try again or to actually pursue their dream cosplay, which was the original message of this video, but I kind of went off on a tangent about self-worth and loving yourself because you should. And uh, cosplay's fucking badass and we all deserve to have a good time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, it helps a lot, and also leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more, and also turn on those notifications if that's something you're into. With that all said, I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.